having having computer difficulties, but we're here tonight, and we're thanking the Lord for being here again on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Certainly, a gorgeous day on today. We thank God today for His tender mercies, His goodness, and His kindness towards us. We thank him foremost for dying on the cross for us that we might have the right to the tree of life. We love him today and we thank him for the Holy Ghost, that special gift that he has given us, that he's bestowed upon us. And we are thankful and we hope that you are thankful of all the things that God has done for you. And we want to just take a few minutes just to give him a prayer, a couple of songs, and then we're going to turn the remaining part over to Bishop Fowler. Oh, 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 oh,
my heart. Tell me, tell me so. blessings and his goodness at all time for giving thanks and for his mercy and his kindness at this time we're going to greet go into the word of God And the book of Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, chapter one. Praise God for all He's done, the way He's doing. Give us time to get it together. We have some problems with the computer, but God is straightening it out. Hopefully, my wife, we're gonna get ready to read First Thessalonians. One, I think it is in me. Praise God. Thank you so much. We, we, we are getting there. Go ahead and start reading verse one. First Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, amen. We praise God for the reading. Starting. We want to give a few sidebars on this. And we thank the Lord for the saints. We, we had a little problem, but we finally getting through. But we're going to give you some just some background on this chapter, first chapter, Thessalonians, chapter one. Praise the Lord, saints, 
we thank God today for his tender mercies, for his goodness, his kindness toward I thank him most of all for dying on the cross for me that I made her eternal life with him. I thank him for the Holy Ghost, the gift that was bestowed upon me. How about you? Are you thankful? Let us take a few minutes to give God praise. Just praise him for a few moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank him. We thank him. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a few moments while we're still alive. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, glory, glory. Tonight our lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians 1 through 10. 1 Thessalonians 1 through 10. I said, First Thessalonians 1 through 10. One, the letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Paul is the main author of this letter. We don't know how much of the, of the letter Silas and Timothy wrote, but all three was in agreement with what the letter contains. And number two, Paul was on his second, not one, but his second missionary journey in which he spread the good news about Jesus. Amen? One, Paul was busy in ministry. Two, he left Thessalonica to the city of Berea. Three, he went to Athens in chapter 17, Acts 17, and to Corinth, Acts 18. Now, Paul was zealous and passionate to love the Lord as he had stated on his teaching on the last Wednesday. It was until the Lord spoke to Paul. Paul heard his voice, and then he acted on what he, what God had given, I mean, God had put in his spirit. Last week, the message, the thought my wife taught on last week was about, was about his voice. Y'all remember that last week? He was talking about his voice. She was talking about rather his voice. So Paul heard his voice and he acted upon the voice that he heard from the Lord. Amen. Now Paul was zealous and passionate toward the love of the Lord as it was stated in his teaching. He just loved the Lord. He just reiterated. He just loved the Lord and he was willing to die for what he believed. The scripture says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the church. To the one who overcome, I will grant the right to eat from the tree of life in the paradise of God. Revelation 3.22. Now, the purpose of this letter, saints, the purpose of Paul's letter wrote, he explained the joy uh, that the writer felt and to give thanks to God for all the good news that Timothy brought. Two, the purpose of the letter was to tell the Thessalonians how much they loved them and want to encourage them as they tried to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Three, Timothy became concerned and wanted to answer the false things that the Jews and other people had said about Paul and his friends. The people said that Paul had come to make a profit from those who believed his message. They said the message was not from God, but Paul made it up. They said because Paul did not come shows that he was not, that, that he didn't care about the Christian. So all these false things were said about Paul because of his love and his zealous for the kingdom of God. But anytime you try to do God's will, the enemy is going to get in it and try to slow the process down. If you can't stop it, he'll try to hinder it or slow it down. But Paul was, was on his missionary journey. He had a purpose. He had a calling upon his life. <clears throat> the verse 1, this letter was written to the church of Thess Thessalonica, to the Christian who met in the city. The Greek called the church of Thessalonica 
in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, which means that those who believe in Christ belong to the Lord. Isn't that great? They belong to the Lord. They believe in him and they belong to him. God started the church by the work of the Holy Spirit. Paul and his friends brought the message about. Praise be to God. People still coming in. We had some problems with people getting on. Thank God for that. Thank God. But the power was from God. You know, last week when White spoke about the power, also she spoke about the about divorce. Divorce has power. When the Holy Ghost come, it'll give you what? Power. Power to speak boldly concerning the kingdom of God. You are bold in this when you're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. People say, I can't speak. But you don't have to speak. The Holy Ghost will speak through you. But if you don't have anything in you, the Holy Ghost can't use you. So you have to get something in you before God can use you. Amen. And uh, he said, the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you should be what? Witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the utmost part of the earth. That means it was going to move from, from this place to that place. It was just going to explode throughout the land because God was in it. Amen. Luke 4, 36, amazement uh, come upon, came upon them all. What is this message? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirit and they came out what a word what power only through the holy ghost hallelujah verse two verse two we give thanks to god always for you all making mention of you in our prayers verse two paul silas and timothy thank god for the thessalonians they thank for what he had done for them, how he gave them new life, and how God had helped them grow as Christians. So every time Paul and his friends prayed, they would always ask God to bless the Christians at Thessalonians, Thessalonica, rather. He, they would always mention these saints that were so loving and caring and wanted to know more about God. They wanted to experience more about the Lord. And they was eager to hear. No matter what people said against these three brethren, they didn't care. They was only interested in what these brothers had done in their life to make them grow and be lovers of the Lord. Amen? Verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God, our Father. In the sight of God, our Father. See, they were willing and they was looking in the sight. They kept God in focus. See, the enemy wants you to get the Lord out of focus, out of your spirit and mind, out of your spirit. He tried to get you out looking away from God. But we are supposed to look toward God, saints. He is our own Lord. He's our peace. He's our joy. He's our happiness. He's our peace in the midst of a contrary wind. Amen? Contrary wind that will blow in your direction. Now, when Paul and his friends prayed, they remembered three things about the Christians at Thessalonians, Thessalonica. They remember three these these three things they remembered. And they remembered other things about them. Their faith, their love, and their hope. Their faith, their love, and their hope. These three things that always stood out in Paul and Timothy, Silas, minds when they would think about these people was their faith in God, their love for God, and their hope in God. Now, if you don't have love for God, if you don't have faith in God, and if you don't have hope in God, it is hard for you to do God's will. 
the faith you must have, the love you must have, and the hope you must have. These three things which encourage them about these Christians in, Th in Thessalonica. What they believed had effect on how they lived. What they believed had effect on how they lived. And that's true today. What you believe will have effect on how you live today. Amen? They changed the way they live. Their lifestyle began to change because they believed in what they had been taught and preached and their life came in line with the word of God. Amen? Their life came in line with the word of God. Amen? They changed the way they live. Amen? They changed the way they live. All people should see that they had changed. And from what I got saved, people said, you know, they couldn't believe that, that, that I was a different type saved person. They said, I know, see, the way you live, I see change in you, but I can't believe it. They couldn't even believe what they saw because it was so, it was so different from what they saw years earlier. That's the way it is. When you became a faith believer, a love of God, and you're hoping a new life, everything around you affects your life the change in your life. And people can see what you see that change. Their love for God showed itself in love for others. They shared the love of good news about Christ, about Jesus. All that they did was evident for their love for God and for the other people. They were strong because they had a hope in, in Jesus Christ. They had a firm conviction. No matter what happened to me today, I believe God's going to make it better. I don't know how my, sad my day may be. Glory, how, how happy I may be. I know tomorrow I got hope it's going to get better. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's going to get better. They're going to get better. It's going to get better. It's got to get better. Why? I believe I got hope and my hope will not fade away because I know God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. With everything that's in me, I love the Lord. Do I do all things right? No. Do I make mistakes? No. I make a lot of mistakes, but God has given me grace over my mistakes. And he looked beyond my faults. And he saw my needs. So it's like I never did it, saints. He said, because he put it in a sea of forgetment and remember no more. So all the things I did, I can say I don't remember because God don't remember. If God don't remember, you should remember. Amen. Glory to God. Read on. Okay, we're going to read further. The things. The things that we are experiencing today, saints. The things that we share today, let us not forget the power of the Holy Ghost. We started uh, kind of late because we have we was having issues with the computer and the enemy didn't want to get his word out tonight, but we getting it out. Amen. Says we often use the word hope, but there is doubt where there is doubt, we got to have hope, saints. We don't know whether what we hope for will happen. The Christian hope is to be certain about something. When God says something will happen, it will happen, saints. When God says something will happen, it will happen. Somebody give God a point of view. I feel in my spirit that somebody tonight have been hoping, been waiting, been trusting. But I believe that God's going to make it happen. Glory to God. Somebody give God a prayer. I believe tonight that something good is about to happen. Say it again. Something good is about to happen. And I believe on tonight it will happen. I believe tonight it shall happen. Amen. Amen. Jesus promised that 
he will come again to earth. The Christian is looking for forward to that day. Hope gives strength. The Bible says hope gives strength, courage, and patience to live while we wait for Christ to come. Hope gives strength. Say it with me, saints. Hope gives strength, courage, and patience to live while we wait for the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all the things that happen around us, saints. We got to have some hope. We got to have some hope, saints. The, the Jews and others did not believe in the Lord Jesus, attack those Christians. But they overcome. They overcame in all their trouble because their hope was in the Lord was firm. Is your hope in Jesus firm tonight, saints? Is your hope firm in Jesus tonight? Hold on so you get what you want. The late apostle Grace said, Tell, take a rope and tie knot in it and hold on. Hold on, saints. Don't let go of God's unchanging hand. Read on. Verse 4, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Read on. Keep reading. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Manner of men, saying we have lived a life before you. We didn't waver in our faith. We didn't waver in our love. We didn't waver in our friendship. We didn't waver in our patience. Even when you were not Christians, we were not believers. We still didn't waver. We had hope and trusted that the God was going to make it happen. And he, he, the Lord made it happen. He saved these people that supposed to be an outcast or nobody. God is a lover of the nobodies. I was a nobody one day. But with Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he made me somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. When the world writes you off. See, your daddy was a drunk. Your mother was a streetwalker. You didn't have much education. You didn't have all this and that. But one thing about it, God said, I got hope in you. And that day he came, saints, in my life, where he changed my life because I had hope in God. And they, 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 that, in Thessalonians, they didn't waver. Even when these men had other areas they went in ministry in, the hope, the love, the faith they left with them empowered them. Paul and his friends knew that God chose these Christians at Thess Thessalonians to be his own. They knew God chose the Th Thessalonians because they believed the message and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul and his friends saw that change. The change could only come from God. Hallelujah. I can praise God on that mm -hmm. same the only change came from God. Only change in my life, it came from him. Not from me. I couldn't change. I tried. I failed. Many times I said, I'm going to stop this. I'll stop that. But I'll always fail. But with God, is no failure in God. Give me a little bit. There's no failure for real. There is no failure. He will do whatever you ask him to. Just have faith and believe he'll help you to succeed. For there is no failure. No failure in God. Keep on. Oh, 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 oh in God. There is no 
Jesus Christ to the people at Thessalonians. They believed that the efforts of the message was not from their words or how clear, clever it sounds. The words could not have changed the lives of those who believed. There was power in the message that was much greater than the words. The Holy Spirit worked both in those who declared the good news and heard it. The Holy Spirit took what Paul and his friends said to apply it to the hearts and minds of the listeners. If Paul and his friends did not live a godly life, the people would not have accepted what they said. How they live agreed with the message they spoke. God gives new life to those who want it. So it's up to the speaker, the individual. The Holy Ghost works through you to do the work. And but your life has to correspond with the Holy Spirit. If your life is, is bad, your word won't have much value or power. But these men live accordingly as they spoke. What a word, what a life to live in this long life on earth. Could be long, could be short, but it's so beautiful when you have the Holy Spirit. You want to read on. Verse 6. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. With much affliction, with joy in the Holy Ghost. It gives you joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Six verse is, is a powerful word. The, the Christian at Thessalonica saw how Paul and his friend lived while they were with them. Away from their friends and family, people changed when they were around other folks. They tried to blend in. But they stayed committed to the gospel. Amen? They heard how Jesus lived while he was on earth. And now the Thessalonians lived as Paul team had done and as the Lord had done. The Thessalonians accepted trouble just as Jesus Christ, just as Paul and his friend. To suffer was now a normal part of a Christian life. Suffering is a normal part of a Christian life. They were happy to suffer because of the good news of Jesus Christ. They talked about the good news of Jesus Christ, even when it caused them trouble. And John Lewis said, there is good trouble. He said, there is good trouble. Here, I read this, I think about John Lewis, the congressman going on to be with the Lord. He spoke about trouble he got in <clears throat> Alabama, the Freedom March, all these things he went through. But he said, sometimes you got to have good trouble. And these brothers can say that much trouble, much suffering because they believe in Jesus Christ and they had good trouble because God redeemed them. Verse seven, 
so that ye were in samples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. The Christians at Thessalonica lived for Christ. They had now become models of, for other people. They were pattern of all the Macedonians and Achaia, Achaia, Achaia who believed. The country called Greece was in two parts, Macedonia and Achaia, Achaia. Thessalonia was in Macedonia, and Paul and his friends wrote from Corinth, which was a principal city in Achaia. Verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. See the words, even the testimonies of the people, the words spreading. Their preaching went before them. When they got there, the work was done. Basically, because the Holy Spirit had moved, even before they got there, the word was already there. It was doing a powerful move. I'm looking for the day of Azusa to come back. The great move in California on Azusa Street. When these poor black folks and who came to preach the gospel from the south and the north and all over, people came all over the world to hear this world to hear this gospel because the Holy Ghost was breaking out. It's going to be another Holy Ghost move. You're going to see a powerful move in the next six to eight months. It's going to be a Zuzu Street move of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, a verse said, they spread the, God, the good news of the Lord so that all could bear it. I mean, to hear it, rather. They had to bear it, but it, it, they could hear it. The good news spread it from all directions. I just spoke about all directions. They received the good news, but did not keep it to themselves. It's what they said and how they said it and by how they lived made sure that other people knew about Jesus. It's about Jesus, saying It's not about selling books and tapes and magazines and records and all that. It's about Jesus. It's about him. It's about the Lord. It's about him. It's about him. Night verse. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Turn from your wicked ways, and now you're living a life that is pleasing to God. That life that they had, that they used to live, they began to live. Paul came to Thessalonica where he taught for three weeks in the synagogue. He explained and proved that Christ had to suffer and die. He told them that Jesus Christ, Jesus is Christ, the Christ. He told them Jesus came back from the dead. Some of the Jews believe in many Greeks, Acts 17, 1 through 4. Those that believe Paul, Silas, and Timothy welcomed them. They believed the, good, the gospel with joy and were eager to follow Christ. The message was so profound. The news spread wherever. And it reached as far as Corinth. The first people to believe in Jesus had been Jews or Greeks who believed in God. Those who had trusted in the idols joined and believed. Those who trusted in the idols join in belief. They turn away from the hours and believe Jesus. They throw in their witchcraft and doctrine of devils, their worship of idols, and they begin to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. They had come to serve the living and true God. This grace, I wouldn't have a God that I had to carry everywhere I go. I got to pick him up. I got to carry him. He can't help me when I fall. He can't help me when I'm hungry. That God to be served before couldn't do anything for. Him. But Jesus, you have to pick him up. You have to carry him. You have to feed him. 
You want to close them? He's there. He's everything. Serve means to do everything that God says. Slaves do not do everything their master tells them to do. We're not slaves. We're servants. And when I read these new translations calling, say, slaves, that means a slave does everything their master tells them to do. A servant means to do everything that, master, that God says. I would rather serve God than be a slave. God does not force anyone to be his servant because they trust in God and know his love for them. They want to obey. They give themselves to Jesus. The last verse. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus now with Christ in heaven, one day will come for from heaven to earth again. The Thessalonians love, love Jesus and want to see him come in all glory. Those who wait for him were ready, will want to be ready for him to come. They will try to live as he wanted them to live so that they will be ready. We should live rapture ready every day of our life. Are you rapture ready, saints? Are you ready to go back with the Lord if you should practice God at night? We love him. We appreciate him. About 20 years before Paul came to Thessalonica, Jesus died and rose again from the dead. The act of God, action of God, acts of God proved that Jesus had completed the work that he came to do. God is so holy that he is angry, angry at sin and against all that is evil. The time will come when he will judge all people. He will punish for the unrepentant sins. But Jesus rescued all those who love him from the anger of God. This means that God has forgiven our sins and we can go to be with him always. His eyes on the sparrow. Okay. God, we close on tonight. We thank God for the word that you sent our way. Thank God for my wife and my son. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. We thank God for the saints. May heaven richly bless you. Let it be a, a Zusa move. I sent out the Holy Spirit right now. 
I sent out the Holy Spirit right there. I saw him about lost loved one, unsaved. I sent out the move of God. Let these words and amaze my heart be accepted and not say, oh Lord, who oh, right now, heal and deliver. Cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, coronavirus. Work through these things, Lord. Work a miracle. In Jesus, master my name. Amen. Be blessed on tonight. Love you. God bless you.